Hello walkers and welcome back to Livingston, Montana. Um, I'm going to walk you around my little hometown here in sort of southwest Montana, not too far from Bozeman. My name is Henry. I'll spin you around here. I don't usually do this. Uh, my name is Henry. I'll be your proxy walker today, your virtual travel guide, your co-discoverer. I'm going to spin you around again. Uh, this channel, if you haven't been here before, we I walk you around, give you a little guided tour. Sometimes it's because I'm an expert. Sometimes, most times, because I am just finding things just like you. Um, however, I'm an expert on this town. Uh, this is Dan Bailey's, now owned by the former owner of Timber Trails. It's down, I think Dan Bailey's and Timber Trails. Ooh, it's getting loud. Um, in any case, it's an outdoor shop, fishing shop. Uh, you can get guided trips out of there, get all your outdoor needs met. Um, and we have Gill's Goods, which is owned by the same owner of the Murray Bar. Uh, both of them excellent places to get some food. Um, and open four or five days a week for food, and then I think six days a week for drinks. This is a historic depot. I'm gonna go ahead and walk because it's pretty loud here. Take a look into the Murray here. Um, and I don't want the traffic to drone out my dulcet tones. Um, if you don't like the talking, go ahead and mute uh, the video and that might help. We will probably, we're gonna go downtown. I'm gonna show you around here and then we'll walk down to the river. Uh, it is late June, about 3 p.m., excuse me. And uh, 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 24 degrees Celsius. It's a beautiful summer day after a fairly rainy June. Um, we've had a beautiful, beautiful spring, which has been a nice change. Here's a Catabatic Beer Company. It's a brewery, brew pub. Um, makes some pretty good beers in there. Across the way is the uh, Northern Pacific Beanery. It's sort of a diner type place. Um, and this, we are walking along Park Street or Highway 89. You can see across the way, uh, maybe just make out on that hillside a fish, the outline of a trout. Uh, I've done a couple walks up there that you can check out. Uh, trout fishing, or fishing in general, is quite the activity in this part it's because we are located on Yellowstone River. Um, we're going to come up here to Main Street. This building right here is used to be something guest house. It was a bit of a dive, and then somebody came in and was going to uh, rehab it and they ran out of money and it sat for a long time. Finally, somebody has turned it into office space and retail space, which is great. The historic Livingston Bar and Grill has a great bar, but on the far side, which we're not gonna see today, is um, this building is the Fainting Goat, which used to be several other things. Um, and you can get some nice outdoor seating there, some good, it's kind of an Irish pub type theme. Um, and it's definitely worth a stop. Most restaurants are. We may run into some folks I know, so I might say hi, or maybe I'll just say hi to people that uh, are visiting. We've got Wheatgrass Gifts and Books across the way. That's a nice bookstore if you want to try to see that. And then in that alley, you can see a couple of, across over here, a couple of murals, which are fairly new, a couple years old. And the local business improvement district has been making an effort to get more public art into these, into the town. And this is pretty cool. I like that. That one on top even more. And we've got some alleys here and got some really great shops and restaurants downtown. Uh, the Murray is also a hotel. If you uh, ever want to come in and stay, we have some out by the highway as well, excuse me. This is kind of the iconic downtown view here with the mountains in the distance. And we're sort of pointing southeast in this direction. 
some of these storefronts are in the midst of changing things. Sorry. Uh, you've got True North Coffee, which is really good. You've got the, uh, it's coming up here on the right. That building is Campione. It's a fairly two or three year old restaurant, a really good Italian restaurant. Uh, very popular. You want to make reservations well in advance. This is the Danforth Gallery, a nonprofit gallery. Currently, they're uh, showing uh, Kevin Redstar, who is a member of the Crow Tribe, he does some really incredible artwork. And he is located over south of Red Lodge. It's like Rogers or something. I forget the name of the town. It's a tiny little stop on the road over to Red Lodge. Uh, coming up on Calendar Street. And we're going to cross over here. Sorry if we're going to get in this guy's shot. And what we might do as I cross over here is loop around to the left before we go to the river. I am recording this in, on an iPhone, so it's a different camera than I normally use. Uh, so let me know what you think. I'm hoping that the video turns out pretty well. Uh, the audio might be a little bit of a tricky wicket there. Another good restaurant is Pinky's. Been here forever. Uh, has changed hands at least once. They do a lot of breakfast and lunch type stuff. Across the way, where it says sport, is actually the elemental kitchen. Um, you can usually find a table in there. Really good food. Uh, it's got some, it's got a nice Western motif inside. Uh, got some bankers and a home outfitter, then the community health center. Here's the Levingston Center for the Arts and Culture. Uh, a friend of mine runs this, I guess. And they have some great classes for kids. It's really good art uh, on display that changes up throughout the year. And they do a lot to promote art in the community, which is really cool. All right, this is about 248. You can't trust these <laughs> bank thermometers though. This one is always about five to eight degrees off from the other bank thermometer in town. So I just go by what the app says. This is a Park County Senior Center over there, that big building, and they've got a brand new smoothie company that I still haven't tried. It opened up about a week ago. Uh, so that should be a fun little addition to our town. We're gonna make a left on Lewis. The streets, as we make our way down the river, go, um, it's Park, which is the big primary Highway 89 street through town, um, and then, goes to uh, calendar, C-A-L-L-E-N-D-E-R, not like the measurement of days. Um, and then it goes to Lewis for Meriwether Lewis, and then Clark for, I'm blanking on his first name, but uh, from Lewis and Clark, and then the Corps of Discovery, and then it goes down to Geyser, uh, which I think is in honor of Yellowstone and the geothermal stuff down there. It is just a beautiful day today. That's over towards Calendar. We're gonna come up on B Street. So as we make our way east, which is really, I think, northeast, because um, we're on a grid, but it's not north-south, east-west, but people just call this east. Uh, the, the streets are lettered, so this is B Street. Go the other way, it goes Main, 2nd Street. That's the old Lincoln School, office space for um, nonprofits and that sort of thing. And this Baptist church across the way is really cool. That cloth, uh, uh, they have this neon sign and cross lit up. And if we had a different perspective, you get you can go back the street we just crossed and looked through and you can see the in the evenings the steeple lit up and then the mountains in the background. Oh, I forgot, I did want to show you this. It's kind of neat. So the Lincoln School has a bunch of nonprofits, as I mentioned, and um, one of them is the Farm to School organization, which 
gets fresh food into the school. So our kids here that have these, uh, that go to the schools here, get a lot of really good nutritious food. They also run a bunch of educational programs. They grow food and they, uh, over on this side, I believe, is kind of some community allotments. So I believe you can come and um, sign up for one of these if there's one available and have a little garden if you don't have space of your own. That primary peak in the background, that's Livingston Peak. My older son, uh, who's 16, he and a friend went over and climbed that today, this morning. And it's, um, it's, it's four or five miles, and then four or five miles back. Um, and it's not too bad at first. It is a long drive up there to get to the trailhead, but um, then it gets steep at the last bit. So I'm gonna, uh, coming down here as we cross, excuse me, cross C Street. Um, we're gonna see a little particular, or not particular, unique religion to this area, which is the Church Universal Triumphant. And um, this will be like, I think it's the Temple of the Ascended Masters. And uh, if you grew up in the 80s, you would have heard probably of Elizabeth Clara Prophet, maybe seen her preaching on public access television. Um, and they are known for having had some bunkers and had one of the groups that predicted the end of the world. And when she passed, um, many sort of the church lost a lot of membership, but it's still going. And they have a lot of um, specific doctrines that I don't really know much about, so I won't speak about it, but it's here on the left. The other thing I want to show you is the Shane Center as we cross D Street here. Um, I'm going to show you this a sign here, which is the teachings of the Ascended Masters. So you can look up more online about that. This is the Shane Center, and it is a nonprofit in and of itself, but it's a center for the arts and they have theater programs and you people that teach music and they have a music store up there, uh, an instrument store. And you can see the stage off to the left. In the summer, they started doing performances outside because of COVID and they've kept it going. So now every Thursday night they have live music throughout the summer. Uh, they also have a really cool theater program. My younger son loves that. Um, and they do all sorts of community theater stuff. It's great. Um, so much going on here. They also have Faye's Cafe down here. You can see that yellow sign. And she serves uh, breakfast and I think mainly breakfast and they only serve it, they basically serve it until the food runs out. And um, <laughs> hopefully, I just saw that my AirPods connected so I'm not sure if they're connecting and disconnecting. Hopefully the audio is not too rough. We are headed down D Street. I actually live one block over. Um, love these little neighborhoods and these trees. Not all the neighborhoods have these trees, these big mature trees. A lot of them are ash trees and they have to you know, they're susceptible to disease and I think ash borer. And so they have to be cut down from time to time. Some of them are cottonwood trees. These on the left, this big thing is actually a lilac. Lots of great lilacs around town. And this spring, it was just like all the flowers that were out, the lilacs and the other flowers, it was like getting hit in the face with just this wonderful scent of flowers. Today, Sunday, uh, people are having some grilling I can smell, which is nice. We're gonna cross over, because I'm gonna show you another coffee shop that most people don't know about, um, which is a shame because 
It's amazing. They have the most amazing peach trees uh, that I've had in Montana, I can tell you that, and in many other places. So. But we're coming up to Clark, so um, the coffee shop is called East Side Coffee. They're only open till like one, maybe, or noon. They run out of pastries early, but they do serve food. Um, the current owners are selling it, and I think they have a buyer lined up apparently. So hopefully he will continue on with the service because it is fantastic. And they've got this amazing garden here. Let me look this up. Outside seating, they have some inside seating as well. But it's just really nice to come down here in the morning and um, have a coffee and hang out, maybe read a book or uh, chat with people. It's, it's kind of a nice little treasure that not everybody knows about. I'm worried about the audio on this. A lot of my filming is trying things out and um, seeing what works and what doesn't work and figuring out the problems that come up. doing some yard excavation down there. It is floating season. I had some friends that were floating today. Um, and I actually haven't gotten our raft ready yet, so I need to go up and where I keep it and uh, make sure it's all ready for the season. See another raft here. We are gonna head down to River now, and we're gonna cover a couple more blocks to get there. We'll also walk past the high school. Uh, this week, travelingmel.com um, has a job for all of us, our family, not you guys, um, in Cold Spring, New York. So I'm gonna try and get a city walk in there. I'm not making any guarantees, but I'm gonna try that. One thing. I haven't filmed since November. I've been um, sharing out all the uh, Italy walks that I did from September to November of last year, end of November last year. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you haven't seen them, go check them out. You can, they're all sorted out and easy to find on the website, citywalksvirtualtours.com. So check that out. But I also like to thank our Patreon supporters. I, We'll probably put their names up at the beginning of this um, and welcome a couple new ones. I, I can't tell you guys how much that means to me, your support. Um, it really is uh, encouraging and helpful and helps defray some of the cost of keeping this channel running, keeps me motivated to keep filming. Um, and so I, I thank you for that. Um, and welcome. I also have had a couple people this month, um, last month or two, make very generous donations on pay on, uh, sorry, yeah, through PayPal. And I wanna thank you guys for that. It's huge. It just really makes my day, it makes my week to know that people are enjoying these. It also makes my week and my day to hear uh, in the comments section somebody shuttling a trailer down to the ramp at Mayor's probably. Um, to hear that you guys are enjoying that these these videos and that these videos are uh, helpful and adding something positive into the world. This is down here, Fleshman Creek. It kind of runs parallel uh, it, it comes down from the Bozeman Connector Trail, which is a strange name because the Bozeman Trail used to go through here over to Bozeman. And anyway, it um, flows down through there. I've done a couple walks over there. And then through town, mostly underground, and then it comes out at the lagoon, which we will see on our walk today. Um, yeah. Uh, Fishman Creek. Oh yeah. 
and that'll actually end up running all the way down parallel and come out just down past Mare's Landing, which is a off-leash dog park and walking trail, and also there's a boat ramp there. So right next to a golf course, which is on the other side of the rodeo grounds, all of which I have shown in other walks. So if you're interested, uh, check those out. Also, feel free to make requests. I can't always um, film your requests right away, but I do keep a running list and I try to uh, tag you when in the description. Which hopefully you'll get a notification uh, if, hold on. if and when I can film. This building that we've been walking past here is the Livingston Enterprise. It's our local paper. Uh, just recently, they went from daily during the week to, I think, two or three times a week. Uh, the print industry is just getting hammered, which is a shame because, you know, it's nice to have a, uh, a source of local news that is uh, presumably somewhat more reliable than just strangers on the internet. Up ahead, you see the high school. And we're gonna cross over Fleshman Creek here as well. And if you were to make a left at the high school, uh, uh, you would end up down by, you would pass the, um, sorry, the rodeo grounds and the golf course and end up at Mayor's Landing, which is sort of a dead end down there. And you can see kind of the athletic fields over there. You see Livingston Peak in the background. That's the Absarica Range. But we are gonna make a right on River Drive and we'll go past the community pool, the skate park where I believe they are filming a movie right now. There's a lot of movies get filmed in this area. Um, uh, and then into Sacagawea Park, we past the lagoon. And I'll call these things out as we, as we see them. So looking back here at the mountains, off to the left, just where it disappears behind the school there, my dad was went for a horseback ride up there today. He said it was quite nice. A little bit about me, my name is Henry, as I mentioned. Uh, I started this channel in 2017, midway through a year of traveling around Europe as a family. So we spent about a month in different countries as we went, a month at a time. And I uh, didn't really start filming regularly until after I got back and started to pick up steam and I got, got serious about it. And uh, it's got, got pretty popular for a while. And it's still growing. There's a community park over here. I mean, community pool, sorry. And they have all the normal stuff that a community pool has. They have lap swim, they have lessons, uh, afternoon swim, that sort of thing. It's a great resource. I think I've spoken about it in the past where it's pretty, it's in pretty rough shape in terms of maintenance. And they keep talking about building a new one, but as you can guess, that's a fairly expensive process, so um, it has not yet happened. We are going to go see a couple fun things. A couple kids are fishing down here in the lagoon. Looks like somebody might be, somebody's rowing a boat, somebody's got a remote control boat, looks like. Fun. Look at all this white stuff coming down. That's from the cottonwood trees. And it really sets off the, uh, the allergies if you have them. 
Yeah, so they're not fishing, they're playing with that boat, which is cool. And we might get a little, little shower on us. Over here is the skate park. And I'm gonna cross over here. You can see some of the um, accoutrements for filming, which I'm not gonna intrude on for obvious reasons, I hope. It's obvious. Somebody's dog. We're gonna go around the Civic Center. This is like an old, I believe it's an old armory, National Guard armory. It's been converted into a gymnasium and a public space, which is really cool. It is, as you can guess, pretty old. Oh, go my AirPods connecting again. Um, I'll try to keep the the camera close and then over here you can see we've had some rain recently the last couple days and it's not quite dried out in this parking lot but this is the community band shell up here some folks are sitting on the stage and uh, this is where we have our farmers market and I will try to get another walking video from the farmers market where we get an overview of it Sunday this summer. Oh, it is a nice day. I hope you can hear those birds singing. We are going to have this, this uh, berm up here is the the dike that helps prevent flooding. And we're gonna go up here and see the river. The river is still a little bit dirty still from the meltwater from uh, winter snow. But it's, I think it's running around 12,000 CFS right now, which is quick, but totally navigable as long as you're paying attention. I love the view of this sort of this bowl created by the mountains up here. And you probably can't tell, but there's a mountain that, that, that ridge, far ridgeline kind of looks like an old man facing down, and it's, they refer to that as Sleeping Giant. This is the Yellowstone River, and you can see the sort of brown tinge to the water, maybe. Um, it's just silt from runoff and streams and mud being washed out. That will be a prime swimming hole later in the season. And it's, it's been interesting over the last 20 years to see the way this, these channels and this island out here, it's called the Ninth Street Island or Seabeck Island, see how it has evolved and changed and moved around over the years. There's a couple of people out there enjoying the water. But We'll come down here and you can, in the past years, it's gotten really narrow down in here, behind this tree kind of, down in here. And you can jump off the riprap and pretty much make your way over to the other island, which then the water's about two feet lower. And it's flowing a little slower. And uh, hang out on that island and you can catch this current and take the channel down a hundred yards and uh, just go along. When it's ridiculously hot. And in Montana, most people might be surprised to learn that, yeah, it does get hot here. It can get over 100 degrees in the summer and uh, 
especially if you are in the direct sun, you will burn fairly quickly because we're at 4,500 feet, I believe, here um, of elevation. And so there's not a lot of uh, atmosphere between us and the sun. And you definitely want to wear your sunscreen out here and drink plenty of water. Um, but the upside is there's not a lot of humidity in general. So the hot doesn't feel, if you're in the shade, it's 100 degrees, it's hot, but it's not that hot. It's totally tolerable in my opinion. Um, and the same with a cold, it gets down to 30 below. And if you cover up your exposed flesh, uh, it's tolerable, you know. I wouldn't want to be out in it when it's blowing hard wind or without the appropriate clothing, but still, it's not nearly as bad as it might seem if compared to like, you know, 20 degrees in on the east coast, in the northeast there. Whew, that can be rough, a real cold. Okay, so here are some horseshoe pits. And I'm not gonna explain horseshoes, but it's kind of Western bocce. Um, and you take turns throwing horseshoes at those pegs. You can look up the details. This is Sacagawea Park. Um, great place for families to spend time. Athletic teams will use the big field out there uh, for practices, you got an awesome Pompey's Pillar playground, I think that's what it's called, some tennis courts, swing sets, uh, pavilions, good stuff. And just recently, they've got this, uh, they've altered what used to be a wading pool. Now there's a, a splash park, park over by G Street, but um, this used to be a wading pool and they've what they've done is they filled it with sand and uh, some faux dinosaur uh, skeletons for little kids to dig in and discover and that sort of thing because Montana not so much this area but Montana is well known for finding dinosaur fossils in fact in fact, uh, the, I'm gonna go back over to the river. Um, the Museum of the Rockies over in Bozeman is one of the few licensed repositories for, um, or certified, uh, paleontological storage. Jack Horner, famous Jack Horner, that's where he was based. Until he got in a little bit of trouble. Um, but I love this park because people uh, come down and they enjoy it. It's here, families come out, kids play. It's awesome. You can reserve these pavilions. There's one here and then there's a gazebo for functions. We've had a couple birthday parties down here. So this channel on this side of the island used to be much more pronounced and we'll go up here to the bridge and then the other side of the bridge used to be, well there's still a boat ramp but it doesn't do any good because you can't really, there's only a, about a month of the year there, that you can, you could even float down this channel, maybe two months. There's the gazebo through there. Uh, across the way on that island is, uh, right there is a little farm and nursery. They, and they've got all sorts of cool stuff over there. I think they have some aquaculture systems going, greenhouses going, that sort of thing.
It's funny, I've, yeah, it's not really that funny. <laughs> McGee Drive. I would not have been able to tell you the name of that road, even though I've been on it a thousand times. It's one of those things, you know those roads you just, you don't really need to memorize the names if you uh, live in a place, you just know the geography. So I told them, oh, here's a little dot. That's a survey marker. I don't notice that before either. This is where um, one, I'll explain this in a little bit, but we're going to backtrack 100 yards once we see this bridge. And then I'll show you uh, this and what is feeding it. Or this little outlet into the Yellowstone. So I, I'm always a little bit uh, wondering, hi there, wondering how to market this channel or how to target this channel. I know a lot of people use it for virtual travel. Some people use it for relaxation. Someone once called me the Bob Ross of walking channels. I was immensely flattered by that. Uh, and I think a lot of people use it as a entertainment while you're on the treadmill or some sort of cardio machine at the gym. And I think that's great. Um, if you know, have friends that might enjoy this, hope you'll share this channel with them. That's always helpful. You know, I do have the Patreon supporters. I have, thank you again. I have some people that make donations for, via PayPal. Um, and then I make some money on the uh, advertising and it all adds up but uh, it takes a lot of people to make a little bit of money and the money is sort of necessary for me to keep this channel going I love doing it but at some point I gotta pay the bills this is 9th Street that crosses this bridge hence the familiar name of 9th Street Island even though the technical name is Seabeck Island. And I don't know if you can hear with this wind. Um, this is the channel there. Um, oh, and then right before that building over there, that is where the old boat ramp is that's no longer used. But Again, you can bring your little kids out here in the summer when the water goes down and they can splash around and throw rocks and build sand castles and all sorts of fun stuff. We have done many a year of that. Off to the left is Waterworks. It's no longer functioning, but it used to be something to do with the water system in the town. But that little hill doesn't look like much, but when you're five years old and there's snow on the ground and you have a sled, it's awesome. It's fantastic. So you'll, after school on snow days or on the weekends, you'll see tons of kids out there with their families doing runs down the, around the hill. Oh my gosh, look at all this cotton from the cottonwood trees, guys. I'm surprised I'm not reacting more to it. I do have a little bit of sniffles, but that's pretty normal. So I told you we were going to backtrack and I'm going to point out where Fleshman Creek does this kind of weird thing. They have a diversion and it creates the lagoon that we passed earlier and also this sort of backwater over here. And off to the right, I don't know if you remember five minutes ago, but that bench over there, I'll just walk over there. Um, this is where it's sort of an, an, I don't know if it's an emergency outlet, but it's an outlet where they 
release excess water out into the Yellowstone. I'll show it to you just really quickly. And they, they have this head gate that they can uh, shut down when they want to reduce the water flow. And that flows straight out into the Yellowstone. And we'll go up here and it comes through there. And cross over. Look at that. That's a really nice garden over here, isn't it? Well done. Um, and here's the, the back where it backs up. We'll walk along here. Um, there is a beaver that lives here. Uh, there's a, a heron that, or probably several herons, honestly, but we have some friends with little kids and they named the heron Henry Heronson in my honor, I like to think. Um, a little pun. But the, you'll see moose down here as well at certain points of the year. And you want to avoid them because they can be quite ornery. I think I said there's a beaver that lives in here. I believe it still lives in here. And it's always causing consternation. I don't know if that's really true. Uh, I don't know if it still lives here, but it used to. And, you know, they feed on the bark of trees. So this is kind of like a side channel where Fleshman Creek comes in. I can only imagine the mosquitoes this time of year are going to be rough with all this block from the wind. Um, and I'll walk you down. I know you're not that interested in Fleshman Creek, but it's part of the... What's, what is interesting about Fleshman Creek is that I mentioned how the river changes over time. This, what we're walking on, used to be an island. So it was completely cut off from the mainland. There was a side channel, which I believe Fleshman Creek was part of. And they had a bridge out here. And, uh... So we'll, we can hear it. I don't know if I can reach you over these rose bushes. So you can see back in there, that's where Flesh and the Creek comes in. And then most of it is diverted this way. So it used to be an island. And now it's pretty much filled in over time. Become, I mean, pretty much unrecognizable as an island. Although I guess technically it still might be um, and you know 150 years ago when Livingston was just getting cranking um, this place looked completely different in a lot of ways in a lot of ways it was much the same but um, thus is the nature of the river oh, there's a kingfisher up in that branch it's a little soupy out here today. And this is the 7th Street Bridge. It's a footbridge. Um, and we used to live up on Calendar Street uh, near Park and uh, near Mark's In N Out, which is a local burger joint that predates. The California, uh, California franchise. So I think this is created by a beaver in here, but I'm not entirely sure. You can spell it by some gnaw marks. Um, and we'd come down here on the way to the park when we bring our kids down. Personal memories. Good times. All right, guys, I think that's going to be it. 45 minutes here, right near that. Um, thank you for joining me. I'm going to try and do a couple little YouTube shorts here explaining the who, what, when, where, and why of this channel. Keep an eye out for those. And um, in the meantime, we will be filming again very soon. And I appreciate all of you and your comments and your likes and your shares and all that stuff. So thank you. 
We will see you again very soon. Until then, keep on stepping.